Kia ora. That's hello from New Zealand and I'm Pip, otherwise known as Pippity Pop. So today I thought I would show you the super cute and easy flower for, that you can use for decor or for a delivery piece. Now have a fun with all the colours because white and yellow make a gorgeous daisy. I've also added a face to the centre at times to give the recipient in the hospital a real pick-me-up, a wee smile. And I'll show you how we can make this super fun and easy base. So let's get started. Now for this design, I'm using goldenrod for my petals. So I've got four 260Q goldenrods. For the center, I'm using a 160Q in chocolate brown and a 5-inch round in chocolate brown. For the stem and leaves, leaves, um, <laughs> I'm using a 350Q in lime green and a 160Q in lime green. And for the base, a 260Q in pink and a Geo Blossom in pink. Now the other thing that we need is a 30 centimetre or 12 inch ruler to measure the petals. So first we're going to make our petals. So take one of your 260s, in this case I'm using goldenrod, and inflate it leaving about a two to three finger tail. And just release some of the air to soften it up and tie it off. Now I want my petals to be a, a little bit thinner than a standard 260 and I also want extra length in the balloon. So to do that all you need to do is make an OK sign with your pointer and your thumb, pop it around the circumference of the balloon and just slide your hand across. Now, if I inflate my second 260, again, leaving a two to three finger tail, tie it off. And if I pop them together, nozzle to nozzle, you can see just how much more balloon I get by giving it a stretch. So let's stretch the second one. We can stretch it again. And this will give you plenty of room for you to make your three petals. So twist off just a little one finger bubble and pinch twist it. Now we're going to grab our 12 inch ruler or 30 centimeter ruler and we're going to measure off the full length of the ruler and twist off a bubble. We're going to loop that and twist it into the pinch twist. Now just to lock that petal in place we're going to thread the remaining balloon through. So we've got a pinch twist and a loop, and now I'm going to make a spacer bubble. Again, it only needs to be little, just one centimeter or a one, one finger bubble. Now measure another 12 inch loop, or sorry, bubble. Make it into a loop and lock it in. We're going to add another very small pinch twist. Oops. And now a spacer bubble. And then you should have enough balloon remaining to measure off another 12 inch bubble. Again, lock that in place. 
and finish off with a pinch twist. So just going through that recipe again, you've got a pinch twist, 12 inch loop, a little one finger spacer bubble, another loop, pinch twist, another spacer bubble, another loop and a pinch twist. Now by measuring off your loops, it means that you've got a really even petal length. Now we're going to repeat that again with our second 260. Just remember to add your next wee spacer bubble with the remaining balloon and get rid of the excess. Tie it in. Now I'm going to create another spacer bubble. Get rid of the excess. And tie this side into the first pinch twist. You're going to push all the, the pinch twists into the center and of course you can add as many loops as you would like and you can keep your loops this way instead of rotating them which we will later now we need to repeat this with the second two 260s Again, I'm going to leave room for a, a spacer bubble, remove the excess,
attach that to the pinch twist. And repeat on the other side. Now we've got two flowers. Now that we've got our petals done, let's make our centerpiece and the stem. So we're going to inflate our 350 green, or lime green in this case, leaving about a three to four finger tail. I'm going to twist off a three finger bubble and create a pinch twist. I'm going to repeat that with a second bubble. Now I'm going to pop that aside and inflate my five inch round. And that's our five inch round. Now you can make this as large or as small as you would like. I'm going to make it about the size of a orange. Now we're going to grab our petals. Now this is easier on a flat surface on a table. And we're going to flatten these petals out. Just like that. We're going to ensure that the pinch twists are in the center of the ring. And by doing so, that stops the petals from moving up and down, back and forth, round about. Now we're going to place our top set of petals on top of this. And we can either do this now or later on. But what we want to do is we want to stagger the top with the bottom. So the bottom set are peeking through between the top set. I'm going to grab my round just by the nozzle and thread that through the center. So we've got this arrangement here. I'm going to grab the nozzle firmly to make it quite taut and then I'm going to tie that in to my double pinch twist. Securely wrapping that round. Now at this stage, you could choose whether you wanted your flower, if you're doing it, for instance, for decor, and you wanted it upright like this. But if you're actually making it like I have done in a vase, you want your flower um, pointing forward. So to do that, I put in a third pinch twist. Same size bubble, about a three finger bubble, and pinch it, twist it. So I'll have my two pinch twists vertical and my third pinch twist horizontal. And that brings the stem downwards. Now to finish off the center just to give it a nice edge you could just do a, a just a 160 bubble but I'm going to make a series of 160 bubbles so I'm going to inflate my 160 in chocolate brown well oh, hey it's almost a Steve Martin trick there I'm just going to because we've inflated 
reverse inflated. I'm just going to squeeze the ear back so I've got an attachment point here. Now, we're just going to make a series of one finger bubbles. And of course, if you're making a chain of bubbles, you want the, the bubbles to be all twisted in the same direction. You want them to have at least six twists so that they stay twisted. And when you can, a helpful hint, I mean, you can either hold it in your hand like this with your, your wee pinky finger, or you can lock it in between your pinky and ring finger. Just that last bubble to stop it coming undone. Okay, when you think you've got enough, you can measure that up. Oh, exact. Now, because the, the top of your, or the circumference of your bubble at the centre is larger than where you're tying your bubbles in, you can either choose to create the ring and stretch it round or place the ring round first and then tie it. You want the first bubble and the last bubble to be very tightly tied. Just so you can see, no, so you don't see any gaps. So we've got our wee ring of bubbles placed around our centre and you can see that there's a little bit of scrap. I'm just going to tie that in one of the petals. So now we've got it nicely arranged, or just about nicely arranged. If you like me, you can spend hours adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. Now, have a wee play with your petals. See how this one's quite close together? You may want that, or you might want to round it out so you'll have a more rounded petal. But because I'm creating like a daisy, what I'm going to do is on each petal, I'm going to give at the top of the loop a squeeze, almost as if you're doing a shock twist. And what it's going to do, it's just going to elongate that petal and give it a nice point. And now we've got it completed. So now we want to add this to the base. Now for the base, I'm using a a blossom and I'm using a 260Q. So I'm going to grab my Geo Blossom and just inflate it to stretch the latex. Now because I want a wee bit of weight in this, I usually stretch the nozzle over a tap, but I don't have one right beside me. So I'm going to <laughs> try something new. And let's try a bit of syringing of water. This is either going to work or be a disaster. Okay, so I need to add a wee bit more water than that. You would want it to be, oh, gosh, a good, <laughs> let's say here, 60 mil. So probably, you know, half a cup, or oh, a bit less than half a cup. So I'm going to add... A second syringe worth because this is again a lot easier just to over the faucet of your tap. Great stuff. So we've got a wee bit of water in there and now we're going to inflate the rest of the geo with some air. Now 
we don't want to over inflate it we want to tie that off now for the design that I first showed you all I did was I actually just did a little bubble threaded the, the tail through to the geo and tied it onto my um, 350 but I'm going to show you another way which is using the CD technique now this was shown to me by Thelma Lovett from England um, I'm not too sure if it's her original design um, but that's who showed me now what I've done here is I've made the balloon or latex of the round quite flat now what I've been concerned about is that the latex might pull off so um, I have added a little bit of hot glue gun to the edge now you will find when you tie these on over time for some reason scientifically I'm not too sure Andrea and I'll probably be able to help us out there um, the base does tend to blow up and make you design quite wobbly so what I've found is that I just placed actually an advertising sticker or you could place a little bit of sellotape and just pop a couple of wee needle holes just through the center there and that prevents that ear getting trapped around here and blowing up and making your base unstable so I'm going to thread this through now the great thing about having the CD there is that the um, geo is now protected on the base. So if it's put onto a surface um, that could pop the balloon, it won't do so now. Now we're going to measure our, our stem. Now of course <laughs> you can make it as large, but hard for you to see here, as large or as, as short as you would like. Um, I'm going to make it, let's, if I use my elbow, say an elbow to an extended finger length. But again, you can just make this to suit. I'm going to twist that off. And I'm going to deflate and tie. Just like that. Now I'm going to pick up that nozzle from the CD and tie it firmly onto the 350 nozzle. You want it to be a good firm fit. Please excuse all the squeaking. Okay, now if it's tight enough, as you can see here, it'll stand perfectly fine. But what we want to do is we want to create a little collar on here so it looks more like a little um, pot or vase. So what I'm going to do, I'll just lie that down so you, it's not in the way. I'm going to inflate my 260 just halfway. I'm going to create two pinch twists. Just small ones, back to back. Just like that. I'm going to wrap them around as a collar and firmly tie it or twist the end in to the pinch twist. Just like that. I need to get rid of the end. And I'm going to tie that in. Now you can choose to have your pinch twist showing or without. Now when it comes to pinch twists like this, I find it's nicer to have one going vertically and one going horizontally. It just gives a nice finish. So 
you just like that. Now, creating that collar also makes it extra stable. So it's now time to put our leaves on. So we want to inflate our 160, leaving about a 5-inch tail. Now, on finger terms, whoa, that's like a finger and a thumb. A bit less than a finger and a thumb. Just like that. We're going to tie that off. And I'm going to create two pinch twists. Just little ones. Just like that. Now, again, this is going to be a stylized set of leaves because if I was to twist this, this off, um, the 350, then we lose the integrity and the strength of that 350. It becomes interrupted and it can start to flop a wee bit. So I've designed this loop around idea, which I quite like actually. Of course, I'd have to say that, wouldn't I? <laughs> Right, let's wrap that round firmly and tie it into your pinch twist. Now I'm going to arrange the pinch twists up and down. The reason why I do two is that the top one stops the leaf from the top leaf from pressing in firmly against the stem, which we don't want it to happen. So at this stage, to save having to calculate the size of your leaves compared to the end piece, the wee decorative piece, I've, I've found this idea easier. Twist off a little bubble, take it to the end, so we've got more or less like a, a poodle tail. We're going to twist off, say, four finger bubbles, again it's decorative, so we've got that. And we're going to twist this remaining bubble into your pinch twist. So we've got this arrangement. Now you can choose whether you want to split that bubble in half to create two equal sized leaves, or if you would like one leaf to be larger than the other. I'm going to make one larger than the other. I'm going to make my top leaf larger. I'm going to put the pinch twist in close so that it pushes this leaf out a wee bit. Gives it room to breathe. And then what we're going to do is just like we did with the petals, I'm going to squeeze but I'm going to shape it down. So it has more of a leaf look about it. I'm going to do the same with the other. And I'm going to put the, the second pinch twist between the leaf and the wee bobbly bit. And there we have it. A little leaf, of course you can adjust it to be more together, or we can adjust it so it's up closer to the stem. So you can just have a play with that whichever way you would like it to be. And there's our flower. Now this little fella is really made up of scraps. So simple, so easy and so fun. And actually it's a great wee design if you wanted to pop it on a flower if you're doing a headband or on a wrist, but super cute on a on a um, large flower piece as I'm showing today. So let's get started. We just need a scrap with the end or the tip of a 260, and I'm using yellow. And I'm going to inflate it, leaving ooh, two fingers. Depends how long you want the stinger to be. So probably, yeah, two small fingers. And we're going to just tie it off just at the end there. 
I'm now going to grab a scrap of white. And we're going to create two pinch twists. Now the bubble sizing, two fingers. And these are for the wings. I'm just going to get rid of the remaining bubble there and tie it off. Just like that. Now, we want to look at the proportions of the bee. You don't want it too long. You want it to be cute and stocky. So probably a just a little round bubble. I might make the tail a wee bit or the stinger a little bit smaller. I don't want to frighten too many people. And that's a two finger bubble. I'm going to twist this into the wings. Now I'm going to twist off another, so you can choose if you would like to have the head larger than the, the body and, and stinger, or a little bit smaller, or the same size. I'll leave it up to you. We want to twist off, I'm going to do again, say a two to three finger bubble. I'm going to make it very soft, so I'm actually going to remove the ear, and instead of creating a pinch twist, I'm actually going to try... Well, not try. <laughs> so I'm going to cut this off here, release the ear, and instead of creating a pinch twist, we want to create a nice rounded bubble. So I'm just going to pull the tail down back into the wings. So it creates a nicely shaped bubble for the head. I'm going to tie that off and remove the excess. Now we're going to put some eyes. Now you could just do black dots of course, but I'm going to add a little bit of white paint pen. I'm using my Eddings. And it's an Edding 750. And while that's drying, we're going to make the spring. Now grab yourself a, as we would say over here, a pipe cleaner, or you can say chenille stick. And um, I'm just actually um, bending over the very tip, just so that it's not going to penetrate the balloon. I'm going to grab a um, 160 black. So I'm going to grab a 160 black and I'm going to thread the pipe cleaner all the way in. Now the trick is, whenever threading into a balloon, just do it a couple of centimetres or um, ha half an inch and push from there. If you try pushing in, you'll get a lot of bending and it's quite hard to do. So keep your fingers close to the nozzle. We're going to thread that all the way in. Just like that. Now I'm going to grab my Sharpie, or in this case, it's my paint pen, my Big Market. Sorry, it's not a paint pen as such, but it does draw light paints. I love the markets. And I'm just going to wind this around the body of the pen, just like that. I'm going to let that go. Now, let's start with our artwork. I've made two round circles or ovals for the eyes. I'm just going to outline those. Eyebrows, I'm going to give a couple of eyelashes, a little nose and a smile. I'm going to add some blue. And a little black for the pupil. I'm going to add a little highlight. 
with my other eddings. I might even give this one some freckles. So we've got this. Now, for the stinger, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a um, my Vivid, or in your case, a Sharpie, and I'm just going to colour in that uninflated tip. Just like that. Now on this little fella, I put three lines for the stripes. But then I thought I would try for this wee fella. All I've done is I've just had a little bit of electrical tape and I've cut off tiny wee strips. I'm going to try that. Just if you're not very confident with drawing a straight line, these work really well. Let's do three for good luck. Oops, got a bit of a speed wobble on there. There we go. Three little stripes. Now we're going to give him some antennae. So all I've done is I've just cut a 160 in half. I'm going to give it a little tiny bit because it's only a little bee. Just two fingers of ear in there. I'm going to use slightly less than the half of a 160. And I'm just going to tidy up the end there. Take off the excess. And split that bubble into two. Oops, can you see that there? Here we go. I'm going to wind that into, twist that into between the wings. Of course, you could use your pipe cleaner if you wanted to and create wings like that. But I do love the wee bobbly wings. We're going to grab the tip of your, your twisted 160. And twist that again into the wings or the bottom of the wings. Now I'm going to grab my design. Let's say, let's put it at the top. And all it is is a matter of actually, because you do have excess on your 160. I'm just going to tie that in behind the bubbles, as in the row of bubbles. Ring of bubbles, let's say. There we go. She's sitting there. It's perfectly between <laughs> between there. But of course he can move. And you can place them anywhere. So I hope you love this design as much as I do.